So um, I'm really excited. Bryce and I are going to be doing a series of short little videos because we know you're all so busy and sometimes listening to two, a whole hour of people is too much out of your day. So I've got my watch here because I could talk to Bryce all day, literally, and do most of the time. We time ourselves. We're not allowing more than 20 minutes. And the reason Bryce and I wanted to do this is because there's so much freedom, isn't there, Bryce, about, you know, a problem solved is a problem halved and talking things out there. Mm -hmm. So we yeah. wanted to just chat through some subjects that are on our mind. And if they resonate with you, we'll try and make the titles clear. If they resonate, you join in because even by energetically listening, you're then joining in to part of the discussion because at the moment, there's so much going on energetically, isn't there, Bryce? Oh God, yes. We're changing timelines. We're changing timelines right now. It's crazy. So there's a lot happening. And as we know, um, for each and every one of us, we're responsible for our own selves. No one's going to save us. If you're going to ascend, you're going to ascend yourself. And so I think this is such a brilliant idea, Catherine, because this will give people something to kind of look at each day and talk about and figure out how to help themselves more and more and more as we get into this new, new timeline, this new, this new earth. And Bryce and I say the whole time, and every time we talk, I think we get more in this belief, is like the more we learn, the less we know. So when we're chatting, we are literally just saying our thoughts out loud. You know, we might change our mind, we might have new information, it might give us another opinion tomorrow. But I was speaking to someone last night, a really, really good friend, and I was saying the biggest gift that this whole process has given me is connecting with people like you, Bryce, and having the freedom to say, I don't know, but let's chat this through and see if something new comes up for me. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And I think I've shared with you before that that was one of the most groundbreaking things for me as a yoga student is to hear one of the most um, accredited, accredited teachers in the United States say, I don't know. There's a lot of power and I don't know. And there's a lot of power in accepting that you might change your mind in the future. And that's okay. You know, because as we we're going to talk about today, don't believe everything you think. So my favorite quotes, don't believe everything you think. And that has been a huge learning curve for me. And, you know, it's all very well. Everyone learns in a different way, don't they? So, you know, I like to um, read, listen, and then very much do. And to be quite honest, until I do the doing bit, I don't embody it. Um, but also I like to talk about it with other people because I find... Um, I can get quite caught up in my head of going thing over things in my head. And when I then have a conversation with another human being or another animal or a tree or whatever it might be on that particular day, things just become so much clearer to me. And this, I think we've all heard about don't believe all your thoughts, but it's so complex, isn't it? It's incredibly complex. And this is, um, so I'll tell a little funny story. Um, this goes a lot with the yoga philosophy as well of, of examining your thoughts and understanding how your thoughts affect you and how your thoughts also um, disconnect you from source because they're not true. Usually your thoughts are an illusion of your own projection. Well, when uh, before the Westerners started going over to India to study with our late guru, um, he had this saying where he would say 70% practice, 30% theory. Like the theory is only good for 30%, but 70% you need to practice it. You have to physically practice it. Well, when the Westerners came over in like the 60s and 70s, all they wanted to do was drink coffee, smoke, and talk philosophy all day and not practice. And Guruji was like, no, 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 no. And then he changed it to 99% practice, 1% theory. Because when you overthink things, sometimes you actually lose the potency of what the lesson is to begin with. Because I overthink too. That's a, in, in Ayurveda, that's Vata. And I have to remind myself all the time, don't believe everything you think. We are our own worst critics. And so sometimes we we take information and we twist it to almost downgrade ourselves a little bit. And that takes our power away. And sometimes you have to just go into that practice of just doing and just being, whether it's working with animals or, or out and hike in nature, or, you know, instead of just sitting around and like obsessing over thoughts, if that makes sense. Yeah, it's absolutely brilliant. And last night, actually, one of my really good friends, Penny, hi Penny, sent me this beautiful um video on animal communication i'll try and work out how to share it to my community tab later if i can um and it's because i've been doing a lot of animal communication work recently and again my my thoughts have been telling me there's something wrong with this thing about calling it animal communication 
Because it's not really animal communication, it's intuitive communication. And, and whatever species, whether it's plant, animal, mineral, whatever you're speaking to, it's exactly the same process. And in this process, it was wonderful because they were looking at really highly skilled native trackers of animals and hunters. And they were just explaining how beautifully about how when they put their whole focus from their heart onto the animal's track, then they could literally see all these things. I will find out how to share it, folks. It's a beautiful, beautiful video. <laughs> and I just had this real eureka moment. And it was like, yes, yeah, so much of what we label things can just send you down the wrong path. And actually, when you get out there and do it, everything starts flowing. Now, yeah, there is always a balance, perhaps, like, you know, my daughter's a footballer. She needs to learn the technical skills, but there's no point knowing the technical skills if you can't put it into play in a match sort of thing. Right. And, you know, if I'm out there with my animals, I could be the best person at understanding dog behaviour, but if I can't interact properly with my own dogs, it's all useless sort of thing. So it's, it's just... We've moved into a stage, I think, as humans, and obviously I'm generalising, I'm talking more about the Western world here, because we've got much more of a sedentary lifestyle than any of us are designed to have, um, that we do spend a lot more time in our heads yeah. than we're designed to do. And I think this is key to moving forward about how we get ourselves out of this mess. <laughs> get out of your head, basically. Yeah, absolutely. And look what, I mean, we've been all isolated uh for a good almost almost two years now we've been in situations where all you have is your there's a really great book and i don't know if i've talked about it with you Catherine, um but it's coming to mind right now with don't believe everything you think it's a book called flow and it was mm. written by this like hungarian uh therapist i can't say his last name it's like 10 consonants and i, I don't want to butcher that but if you guys just google flow you'll see it come up and he talks a lot about the power of the mind and what gets us into this position where time goes away we're not we're, we're totally focused um, which of course is the now moment, which is where God lives. God lives in the now. The past is done and tomorrow never comes. We're in the now always. And um, and he talks about the brain and how in one section of the book, he spoke about how people reported higher levels of depression on the weekend where we think that, you know, everybody's working for the weekend. We think that's just what we were looking forward to that time off. But during the week you had this schedule. So your mind had something to, to focus on. So you, your thoughts could not get away from you and get out of hand to the point of changing your mood, changing your thoughts about yourself. So when your brain is structured, there is a more free flowing um, of, of good, good intention versus when it's free to just roam and do whatever it needs to do. And, um, and so, and then of course that comes into like getting outside, getting your body moving, working on projects with other people will help kind of rein in the over overthinking, um, which I think a lot of us do that's what causes anxiety that's what causes uh stress disorders is is you're doing it to yourself and and again it's easier said than done right if you're doing it to yourself you can just stop doing it no it's not that it's not that easy because the brain itself is an organ just like the heart just like the lung just like the kidney it has a function you know your brain is your brain your consciousness is your consciousness your psyche is your psyche these are all separate things that are working together as one in this life but the brain as a muscle is is created to keep you alive and so with that being said, it's a problem solver. And so if it doesn't have anything to work on, it's going to go back into the filing cabinet in your brain and pull up old problems that it needs to solve. Like that's when sometimes people lay in bed at night and they have all these bad memories of, of something. It's because the brain's trying to find something to work on. Basically, it's not attached to the emotion. The emotion is part of your own reaction to what it's working on. And so if we start to understand that our thoughts, what we think is not us, it's not the essence of who we are. We can then hopefully start to figure out things to do in our life to, to work around that and to not be stuck in a situation where we're, we're believing our own lives, you know? Uh, I just agree with every word of that. And as biologists, one of the most surprising facts I learned is that 70% of the calories we use as humans, obviously this is an average, are used by our brain. Wow. Now that, that is unbelievable. Um, so anyone losing to a, <laughs> lose weight, concentrate on mind. But it's what those thoughts are around. And they've also done studies that sort of, I can't remember the exact percentage, but a ridiculous percentage, something like 90% or 95% of our thoughts are the same thoughts every day. Yeah. And oh, yeah. that is really crucial, I think, because, you know, what are we doing to change our environment 
or to mix things up a bit to help us be open enough to allowing new thoughts in. And I think this is so related to what we've called, whether it's the brainwashing or whatever we want to call it, that we're seeing in humanity at the moment. Oh, absolutely. You know, a, a Guruji used to always say to people, body not stiff, mind stiff. Like when people would complain about their body, oh, your body's fine. It's your mind. It's your thoughts on your body that are making your body do things you don't want it to do. Well, think about that. If your body is reacting that way, if your body is stiff because your mind is stiff, think about everything else in your life. That's if we know that our thoughts change our reality. We know that. And, um, and yeah, I think that, that, but I, I think I've said this some on another channel, it's kind of like here in the United States with AA, the first step is admitting you have a problem. So the yeah. first step is admitting that you're not, you are not your thoughts. Your thoughts are not you, you know, they're important because your brain is what's keeping you alive. But you have to remember to also keep it in its place. Like your, your job is to keep me alive, but I am more than this. And so I think when we move into this new earth, this new timeline, which we know is coming very, very soon, hopefully, hopefully um, um, we're going to be responsible. But we have to take accountability for the things, for how we speak to ourselves. You yeah. know, even in the yoga practice, the first rule of yoga is something called ahimsa, which is nonviolence, nonviolence. Well, how many people are cool with that with other people? but yet are very violent with themselves. We, we speak to ourselves sometimes in ways that we would never speak to our friends, that we yeah. would never speak to our spouses. Like if we heard somebody say things to our spouses or our friends or our family that we say to ourselves, we would get pissed off. So why are you speaking to yourself that way? You know, why are you allowing your thoughts to, to pull you down when, when we know that, um, listen, you, everybody watching, I've said this so many times that everybody watching is so freaking powerful and such mm -hmm. a freaking badass. That is why they've done all they've done. That's how powerful you are is because they have to do all this stuff just to try to control you. That's how powerful you are. So don't let your brain sabotage yourself because everybody watching is super special, super important. So here, here. And I think one of the secrets to sort of moving on to sort of saying, okay, you've got to recognize it, recognize your thoughts. And I love Wayne Dyer's, you know, if you, if you take an orange and squeeze an orange, only orange juice is going to come out. It doesn't matter what you do to that orange. You can freeze it. You can, it can be moldy. It can be old. It can be hot. It can be cold. But when you squeeze an orange, it's still going to be orange juice. You're not going to get grapefruit juice. You're not going to. So if you're feeling anger if you're feeling sadness if you're feeling hopelessness um then acknowledging that that's within you is the first part and then saying well, what do i want and just calling in whether it's angels universe friends professionals whatever it is to say okay that's absolutely fantastic i've acknowledged this is in me now now what do i want to do about it he was so funny people watching might think i'm kind of crazy i know you won't catherine because i think we've talked about this <laughs> Whenever, when I, whenever I feel, and I've done this since I was like in high school and I actually talked to Cindy about this yesterday about Archangel Michael. I've had a, a very strong connection with Archangel Michael my whole life. And, um, I, I do this now, like when I'm feeling really sad, um, or if I'm feeling kind of that hopelessness and that your whole body just kind of sinks down, I'll often ask for a hug. Yeah. And I'll feel it. I'll get a hug. I'll get a hug from the angels or I'll feel, I'll feel my body being squeezed. You know, and it, it reminds me um, when my nephew, my, my first, the, the baby that made me an aunt, the first grandchild born, um, when my nephew was learning how to, when he was toddling and he was learning how to talk and, you know, Catherine at that age, they get frustrated because they can't really communicate, but they, they know what they want. And so when Charlie would get like frustrated, he was trying to give my sister a toy to fix or something. My sister taught Charlie just to say, help, please. Mm -hmm. So he would know how to say, help, please. And he would walk around and say, help, please. And it's kind of like us too. We're like those little toddlers for the universe. And if you are feeling that, all you got to say is help, please. And the universe always will provide you and will help you. If you know my thoughts are getting the best of me, help, please. You'll get help. You'll have someone, uh, an energy come and help you course correct. Help you bring you to a place where you're, you're feeling good and your thoughts are clear and you're focused. You know, it, it's true. It's magical. It's true. That is absolutely beautiful. I just love that. I'm going to use that at art. And, you know, just really asking, because just like we can be very cruel to where we talk for ourselves, most of us, and I think most people watching your work or my work, they're very empathetic. They're very giving people to others and everything. And we can see that from a lot of the comments we've got. 
But it's really, really important that we learn to ask for help for ourselves as well, because, you know, you do, it's like the age old thing. And as a mum, I know this more than anything. Children do what you do, not what you say. Oh, absolutely. They don't always follow because they might choose to do deliberately what you don't do because they've learned from your mistakes. But they're not, it's not the words. It's like when you're communicating with a tree or an animal, the words are irrelevant. It's the intention behind the words that they're picked up up on. So when you genuinely ask for help from wherever that might be able to be, it's so wonderful when you see that it comes from most of the surprising sources, doesn't it? Yeah, it makes me emotional. Yeah, because, you know, I think that's true. I think we've been taught, especially like, you know, in the Western world with most of us are grandfathered into the Christian faith that we should feel guilty or we have to like prove ourselves. But God source is pure love, pure love. All your guides are nothing but pure love. And they, they are, their whole being and essence is there to help you. You have the help available, but again, the law of the cosmos is free will. So you have to ask, you have to ask, but they'll, they'll be there in a heart. They want to help you. They want to hold your hand. They want to give you that hug. And so if you feel like your own thoughts are, are too much and you don't know how to course correct it, you just got to reach out for help. You just got, and we, and I think it's a pride thing too. Like we don't want help. We want to do this ourselves, but at some point, everybody needs help. At some point you can't, it's like the whole airplane thing. You got to put your mask on first before you can help somebody else. And when you are a mother, when you are a wife or a husband, or when you have um, children or you're taking care of someone, or you're taking care of your, your animal children, there are, there are people, there are beings in this world that depend on you. And so you have to be able to fill yourself up too. And if that means that you have to course correct your thoughts or ask for help, or honestly, I'm a huge, I'm a huge proponent of exercise, whatever that is, get your blood pumping that will clear your head. Whether it's just a 20 minute walk down the street, it doesn't matter. Just move, dance. I mean, I've, Catherine, I, I love to dance in my living room. Like it's so fun. You know, <laughs> so many times before, and you've moved me because I'm being really strict with us here. So, so, so We've got five minutes left. You have taken the words right out of my mind because in terms of solutions for people, I am so there with you. Exercise. Now, even if you can't move, if you're in the current state of your physical body as at the moment that you can't move, but you can exercise through your breath. Yes. Really oh, effectively yes, without yes, moving yes. your body at all. Absolutely. There was a story a few years ago where a girl who practices in the Ashtanga lineage that I practice in got into a terrible accident and she was hospitalized in a, in a bed with like full body cast. And of course couldn't do her practice, but you know what she did every day? She laid on her bed and she breathed herself mentally through her practice. She went through every single posture, the inhale, the exhale, she saw it in her head and it, it like, upped her recovery time. So yes, you can, you, you can bring yourself to that place of movement in your mind with your breath. If your body can't move, there is a way to do that too. And if anybody has questions about that, you can always email me too. And I'll, I'll walk you through that, but yes, and it doesn't, and exercise again, exercise doesn't have to be some like two hour, like lifting class, go dance exactly. in your living room, go walk, go get outside in nature, go ride a horse, go, go walk your dog. I have so much fun walking now that my dog is on Catherine's diet. <laughs> he's a lot easier to walk now. So, so, um, you know, and go, co go commune with nature, you know, go, go be and, and animals, they're good at, they're good at keeping you in the moment, you know? So, so, um, there's always a solution. You just got to find what works for you. What yeah. makes you have and experiment and, and have fun with it and try things that don't work out and try telling yourself that your body can do different things as well. And it can literally, it can be planting vegetables. You might be living in some parts of the world where we're coming into the planting season the sun's come out for the first time in ages today um so so what we were saying you know by today i mean um bryce and i were just having a fun session with our crystals before we yes. start filming and for me now i know w whatever tool you're doing you're tapping into yourself but for me focusing on this is a really good way of getting me out of my headspace and being oh, more absolutely. effective Exactly. I mean, I'm sure Catherine, this I play with this all day. This is a board you can use with your pendulum and you can talk to your higher self, which is what I do. Listen, my higher self, she's really cool. She's super laid back, very opposite of me. But, <laughs> but, um, and you always ask if it's for my highest good. Yes. And then you can talk to yourself and yourself will give you, will give you really good advice and will tell you like, I love you. We'll tell you like, you're going to be fine. Just breathe. That was one thing. One of mine said, just breathe. And I was like, how funny is that? They're telling me to breathe. And I, I'm a yoga teacher, but, um, but you know, yeah, it's awesome. And it gives you a focal point for sure. I'm glad you brought that up, Catherine, because yes, 
Yeah, and it's fun too. It's fun, and you can do it with it's friends, fun. have a night together. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, you know, then connecting with like-minded people. So, you know, problem shared is a problem. And so if you're finding you're too caught in your thoughts, then find someone to share it with. I'm always sharing my problems with Bryce and it's just fantastic. And I Thank love you. all her advice because I know it's all coming from a heart space. So, you know, we've all got that special someone um, wherever they are in the world. And, and, you know, if Bryce isn't available, then I'll go and ask my trees, <laughs> you know. So um, I hope you have fun with this. Yeah, carry on. I say before we leave, I channeled Ravi, my dog's higher, higher self, because I wanted to see how he's feeling with Catherine's new diet. And he called me mommy. And I have to tell people, Catherine, that Ravi is very attracted to Catherine. He knows she's one of his soulmates because they were in a pack together in a past life. And so. I feel that because I 100% know we have been. And, you know, I, 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 sometimes you just know, and it doesn't matter how mad anyone else is. I was listening to the David Icke interview yesterday and I on London Real. I've spoken about it before. And I would just say, look, guys, you know, you get to a certain stage where you really let go of having to satisfy other people's impressions from you. So, so. Today, you know, our little video today, I hope you've enjoyed it. Please do let us know um, whether you like this format or not. And we can obviously improve it and take on board your comments. But, you know, you are not your thoughts and find ways to have fun with working through that. Yeah, for sure. And let us know what you're doing. What are, what are you? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. We're so open to new ideas. We're always trying out new things and everything. So we love to hear what works for everyone. And when you share your comments, there'll be someone else in the comments thinks, oh, that's fantastic. I can do that. I can give that a go. Well, that really sounds like a good idea to me sort of thing. Um, so, yeah, we, we can't wait to hear what, your, what works for you. And um, please share, 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 because sharing is caring. <laughs> How cheesy is that? Thanks so it. much, guys. Till oh next time, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Have fun. Have a great day.